Hi, I'm John Pasalis, real estate analyst and founding broker of Realosophy Realty, where I lead our team of agents in providing data-driven real estate advice to home buyers and home sellers throughout Toronto and the Toronto, greater Toronto area. We are into week 10 since the province of Ontario declared a state of emergency in response to the coronavirus crisis. And as always, I'll be taking a quick look at the latest weekly trends and I'm gonna to touch on uh, condo prices in the city of Toronto as well. If you find these videos helpful, please hit the like button. And if you wanna stay up to date on all my latest videos, please follow this page. Uh, when we look at the change in sales year over year, we're seeing a very similar trend. Sales last week were down 53%. Uh, year over year so we're kind of following the same trend that we've been seeing over the past few weeks new listings as well have been down 51% over last year uh, but these two charts alone don't really give us a big picture of what's going on in the market again when we look at these we start to think well maybe the housing market's uh, tanking because sales are down significantly or at a minimum it's staying balanced because both supply and demand are down around 50 percent but this doesn't really take into account the balance between supply and demand which we look at using this metric called the months of inventory, which looks at the total number of homes on the market and divides it by the number of sales in a given month. So the more inventory, the more well supplied the market is and the less competitive it is. The lower the inventory, of course, the more competitive. So we look at the months of inventory since the beginning of the year, you know, they, they bottomed out in sort of February, early March with under one month of inventory. So very competitive market. And then the week ending April 11th, you know, we did see both buyers pull back quickly. A lot of the homes sat on the market a little bit longer, so inventory spiked at four and a half months. Uh, but since then, it has been declining. And last week, we had 2.4 months of inventory, which puts us well into a seller's market territory. So that's a market that favors sellers, not buyers. Um, and the reason this is happening is because over the past five weeks, both sales and new listings have been increasing. That's normally what they do leading into the spring market. Uh, but the problem is that sales have been picking up at a faster rate than the new listings have been. So new listings haven't been keeping up. And what's been happening is that every week that we've been moving towards since then, we have more buyers competing for fewer listings, which has really tightened up the inventory and has actually made the housing market more competitive. Again, this isn't something that's intuitive that a lot of people would have thought, but the market is actually becoming more competitive as we're heading into the uh, summer market because of those reasons. Now, since starting these weekly videos, uh, I've indicated that prices have remained stable even during this slowdown. I mean, we're not quite at some of the peak prices people got in late February, March, but have maintained uh, pretty stable. But last week I started getting a lot of emails from questions from people asking me about news articles they read that saying that condo prices had fallen uh, 10% uh, in the city of Toronto and in some neighborhoods as much as 18%. So the question of course, what's the truth? I mean, are, are condo prices stable or are they following between 10 and 18%? Now, when we look at articles like this, of course, it's important to try to separate fact from friction. And that's really one of the reasons I started recording these videos to help people make, again, better decisions based on real information and not fiction. So when we see big changes in medium prices like this, it's important to try to understand what's going on in the market. Are actual prices falling or is there something else going on? And one thing we can sort of dissect and understand to take a look at are the number of homes selling in different price ranges or, or more accurately, the percentage of homes selling in different price ranges. So when we look at that for the month of February, we can see that um, sales under 500,000 made up about 18% of all the sales for that month. Uh, between 500 and 600,000, that made up about 23% of all sales. And then when we look at sort of the over 1 million price range, that made up about 11% of all the sales for the month of February. Now, when we fast forward to the month of April, we see this really big increase in the percentage of transactions under 600,000. So a big increase in the number of transactions under 600, and then every price category over 600 actually declined. It meant fewer of these, of these properties were selling in this category. And more specifically, when we look at the above 1 million, um, the, those share of sales actually dropped from 11% in February to 5% in, uh, in April. And this, again, when we look at these statistics, this is sort of one of the big reasons why we saw a big dramatic decline in the median price because it was a completely different types of properties that we're selling uh, in, in the month of April. Far more affordable, far fewer luxury, which completely changed the statistics. So this is why it's important when we look at data like this in the news, sometimes the statistics can be accurate, 
but very misleading, which is why it's important to question them and better understand what's driving these numbers. Uh, and is everyone condo worth 10% less or is there some kind of anomaly going on with the data um, that's, that's causing these numbers to decline? So overall, condo prices have maintained uh, have remained relatively stable over the past couple of months and then over the future we're going to be kind of obviously keeping an eye on any potential changes that might happen as this balance between supply and demand potentially changes in the months ahead. Uh, if you have any questions about this video please post a comment below. If you have any specific questions please shoot me an email at askjohn at moosmartly.com and I'll see you next week.